Hello guys and gals and welcome to another episode of Unique Items. Today we're going to be doing uh, ooh, a fun one, a very fun one. Uh, we're going to be doing um, Astron's Iron Ward, uh, which is a catechist. So this is an elite item and that means it is already the highest tier that it can possibly be. So there won't be any upgrading of this. Now, Astreon's Iron Ward is uh, one that I don't think a lot of people understand uh, what it's for and what it's good for. Um, it actually is the best smiter weapon in the game. And I know I'm going to get a lot of uh, a flack for that uh, because it, it is a loaded statement. Um, and the loaded statement is basically this. Grief is still better for PvP. So if you are a smiter and you, you PvP even like at all, like even one time... Um, Grief is going to uh, beat it in PvP, hands down. Uh, and the reason why Grief beats it in PvP is because Grief bypasses the uh, the PvP penalty. But if you are strictly a, um, a smiter who is only PvE, or PvM rather, um, PvM smiters actually have more damage on the Astron Iron Ward uh, than the Grief. Now the really weird thing about this particular weapon is that it's such a close race anyway that it doesn't really matter and uh, most people are probably still going to use grief over astreon's iron ward because they generally like to do the pvp aspect of things also uh, a grief is a lot of the times easier to get your hands on than an astreon's iron ward um, especially in the good condition that it needs to be in to um, achieve these goals and um I'll uh, go over all the stats and we'll talk about the rest of this as we go along. I will also provide links to parses specifically revolving around the entire argument between Grief um, and Astron's Iron Ward and the parses that prove that Astron's Iron Ward can deal a little bit more damage and a little bit faster kill speed than Grief. But it is such a close race that it really doesn't even matter. Um, basically, all we really need to know is that Astreon's Iron Ward is a solid choice for a, uh, a smiter. Um, and if you don't have a Grief, it is absolutely an excellent choice for killing Ubers with. Um, <laughs> so let's go over the item together and we'll talk about these stats. So right off the bat, you'll see that it has 144 to 167 one-handed damage. Uh, we've got 70 dexterity, 97 strength, and a required level of 66, which is relatively low. We have a plus 4 to combat skills, which is unfortunately a variable. Um, this is one of the things that makes Astreon's Iron Ward terrible, is that a lot of the times it will spawn with only 2 plus to combat skills instead of 4. So four combat skills is the uh, is the perfect version, and two is the absolute terrible. And of course, it can also spawn with three. Uh, we also have 10% increased attack speed, which isn't a lot, but it's better than nothing. Uh, we've got an enhanced damage, which does vary from 240 to 290% enhanced, uh, which is uh, not bad, but um, it, it's still a pretty big variable there. Uh, we also have a damage bonus of 40 to 85, which, believe it or not, this damage bonus actually functions very similarly to the way that Grief does. Um, and this is one of the reasons why it actually makes a very good smiter weapon, is that that plus bonus damage actually still affects the smite damage. Um, it's off It's off screen, much the same way that uh, Grief's damage is off screen, but it has been tested uh, to work with Smite, which is which is interesting. Uh, we also have um, the 200% bonus to attack rating, uh, which is really, really high. So 200% bonus to attack rating is the equivalent of like half of a zeal, like a full zeal attack. You see my zeal right now is level 25 and it's 250%. Uh, so at level 20, we're probably looking at 200%. So it's literally the same amount of attack rating bonus that a level 20 zeal would give you, which is pretty darn sweet. And I may have made a slight um, kind of faux pas there as far as the damage is concerned. Um, you notice how mine says plus 85. Um, what I meant when I said it is 40... 285 or yeah 4285 as i didn't mean that it's adding 4285 damage um it's a variable so it does vary between 40 to 85 so for you to get a uh, a perfect astreon's iron ward for this particular purpose of smiting um it would have to be plus four combat skills it would have to be plus 85 
on the damage. Um, and you would probably also want a 290% ED as well. Uh, so we've got a lot of variables here. And, and, and like I said earlier, this is one of the reasons why this weapon ends up being so poor, uh, because a lot of the times these variables end up really bad. Uh, we also have a uh, 80 to 240 magic damage, which is pretty amazing. Uh, and when you use this um, for zeal or, uh, or any kind of skill that is a melee skill, that magic damage is actually has a huge effect on your kill speed because most monsters have absolutely no resistance to magic damage. And, um, and it just applies fully, which is very, very nice. Uh, we also have 33% chance of crushing blow, which of course is the chance for the damage to deal 25% to the monster's current HP, not their total, um, and 12.5% to bosses, um, and 10% in PvP. 33% chance is a very nice number. Um, it's a very nice little round number. And um, and you will notice that um, if you stack this with a couple other items, like for instance G-Face and maybe some Goblin Toes, um, you'll be pretty high on the Crushing Blow at that point. Uh, and, uh, and generally you want to get to a nice sweet spot around like 60-65%. Um, to get uh, to make sure your crushing blows are going off pretty much all the time, uh, we also have a slows target of uh, twenty five percent, which is always nice to have on a uh, on a character. Uh, it means all the monsters will be slower by twenty five percent whenever you hit them, and um, and it definitely works on bosses. We have damage reduced by seven, which does vary from four to seven. Um, and while it's not a huge amount, it's definitely nice to have a little bit of dr. Um, it will um, help keep you alive versus some of those larger physical hits. And it will almost completely negate a lot of the lower damage physical hits. And then, we, of course, we have the 50% damage bonus uh, from it being a uh, mace class. So we got the 50% undead bonus damage there. And um, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go over this particular weapon and uh, we're going to play around with it. Now, the ethereal version has 214 to 249 damage, a lot higher. And, of course, if you are to use the ethereal version, you're going to have to put a Zod rune in it to make it indestructible. And uh, we're going to go ahead and play around with this particular weapon uh, using Smite. And, uh, and we're going to have some fun murdering some stuff. Uh, because why not? This is not uh, particularly a, uh, a client character that is built for smiting. But we're going to have fun with it nonetheless. And uh, what do I got here? I don't even have fanaticism. Terrible. Let's just use Holy Freeze for the fun of it, shall we? And let's go ahead and grab our Smite. Which is not even maxed out. Not even maxed out. And uh, let's do this, shall we? So one of the beautiful things here is that you can smite with the weapon. And you can also um, then use fanaticism as well. It works very well as a dual weapon. So both fanaticism and smiting. And, uh, of course, one of Smite's big downfalls is that it's only single target, so you do have to hit the target specifically. And uh, it's not as good for the um, clearing of multiple monsters, but I do find that, um, you know, obviously Smite is extremely effective at taking out single targets. So if I were to go in specifically and, uh, like, for instance, just, just go in and single target uh, Shank out, I should be able to take him down in a matter of seconds. Uh, with this particular weapon. And uh, and if I were actually built for smiting, it would go a lot quicker. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not built for smiting. This character is uh, is only running level 10 smite, which is, uh, which is terrible. Um, and he does have max holy shield at least, which means he's getting uh, a little bit better. And he is using a Herald of Zacharum with the um, with the Zod rune in it, just for... Because uh, it was in one of my previous videos, believe it or not. die. Now I would like to go over some of the data for Astreon's Iron Ward and, uh, and we'll talk about it. Um, but before we do that, let's talk about what it could be useful for besides smiting. Um, Astreon's Iron Ward is actually a pretty nice zeal weapon. Um, it definitely works fine. Um, it is more of an end game weapon because of the higher level requirement of 66, so to keep that in mind. But it does have a lot of very nice effects on it. Um, the bonus to attack rating, the combat skills, increased attack speed, the bonus damage that it adds to your attack, as well as the slows target and the crushing blow, all of which add up to a really solid weapon. And if you were doing like a solo self-found paladin or something, and you came across a decent Astreon's Iron Ward, it probably would be one of the best weapons that you'd have in your arsenal. 
Um, now, granted, you could come across better weapons than this, um, but uh, you're going to have a hard time coming across uh, a better weapon in a solo cell found. And um, if you were having trouble coming across the low rune to make your grief, and you did come across an Asteron's Iron Ward first, it could very easily work as a placeholder. Um, I've also noticed that Asteron's Iron Ward is relatively cheap on most trading sites, um, so if you do happen to uh, want a cheap and easy to come by smiter weapon early on in, say, Ladder or something like that, and... Um, you know, you see an Astreon's Iron Ward for fairly cheap up for sale, um, it could very easily be the placeholder weapon for your smiter until you come across your low rune to put together your grief. So do keep that in mind. And um, let's go over this uh, this data real quick, and we're gonna we're gonna look at um, at this website. So uh, what we have here is a whole bunch of uh, of parses that involve um, Astreon's Iron Ward uh, and uh, and grief. And uh, we have basically an average damage listed here. Um, where is it? I'm trying to find. Uh, it's it's a little difficult to uh, to kind of put together the parses because they're very long. They're very drawn out. They involve um, you know like multiple smite attacks all the way up to like 50 smite attacks uh, within a certain number of seconds. Um, like for instance, um, with Astron's Iron Ward, we're looking at a total of 31.46 seconds to kill the target that they're talking about. Um, they go through the process of showing all their equipment as well, which is uh, which is interesting. And um, let's go back and see if we can find the data on the grief. And like I said, this this link to this particular um, website uh, will be in the description for you guys, so you can take a look at these parses for yourself. Um, but, um, you know, despite the fact, in my opinion, that it proves that uh, Astran's Iron Ward can be more effective in PvM, Grief's ability to bypass the PvP penalty makes it the superior choice. And, uh, and the ridiculous, and I want to say ridiculous, um, variables on the Astreon's Iron Ward mean that a lot of the times, even if you find one, it's not going to be better than a Grief because the variables are terrible. Um, you might end up finding a plus two Astreon's Iron Ward with only 40 on the plus damage. And, uh, and that is going to be an absolutely horrible choice by comparison. So here we go. We've got the, um, is that Grief? Let's see. Make sure I'm looking at the right one here. So Last Wish, which is obviously going to be better, because uh, Last Wish is OP as I'll get out. Uh, let's just move on to Grief, shall we? If you've got a Last Wish, I don't know why you're looking at Astreon's Iron Ward. Uh, so Grief is um, right here. 32.92 seconds um, to kill uh, Diablo or Bale during this smite sequence. Apparently they used both and they tested both. So uh, so they did Mephisto, they did Bale, uh, they did Diablo, and they tested all three. And uh, Grief was 32.92 seconds in, with this particular build. Um, and we go to, again, go back to the Astreons, and it was 31.46 seconds. So a little tiny bit faster. And that was one of the things that I was trying to point out about this um, when I originally started this video. I wanted to, to, to point out that they're so ridiculously close together that we're talking about a difference of like one second on the kill speed. Like, uh, like, a, like a whole one second. And um, it's not a lot. It really is not. But it is quite an amazing weapon. Um, the Astreon's Iron Ward Catechist definitely has a lot going for it. Um, and I feel like if you're in a situation where you are, um, you are zealing slash smiting, um, this can actually come in handy because that magic damage, the bonus damage, the relatively high damage on the Zodded version, um, you know, the uh, the fact that um, it would be indestructible, of course, with the Zodded version. Uh, it's just uh, good luck finding a perfect Astreons. That's, that's really all I've got to say about that. Good, good luck finding a perfect Astreons. And since we're on finding it, um, let's talk about specifically finding it, shall we? Because that is a, an entirely topic on its own. Um, so if we go to the treasure class, or Diablo 2, and uh, and we pull up uh, Astreon's Iron Ward, we will find that it is a relatively high level 
item um, in the TC87 class item sets. Um, and uh, that means that it is only going to drop from very high level monsters like uh, like Bale in Hell Difficulty or Diablo in Hell Difficulty. Actually, I'm not even sure if Diablo in Hell Difficulty can drop it. I know his treasure class is a little bit lower for some reason. Um, you should be able to get these from uh, the pit um, on Elite Monsters, um, Ancient Tunnels from Elite Monsters. There are quite a few level 85 zones um, that you can go to. But in general, you're not going to find Astrion's Ward, Iron Ward, from, from regular monsters in uh, uh, you know most zones. Um, Chaos Sanctuary Elites might drop it. I believe Chaos Sanctuary Elites can drop it, but not um, the regular monsters. And um, it just becomes one of those interesting things that um, it's rare. And when you do finally find it, there's a very good chance it's not going to have the appropriate stats to really be a viable weapon. Um, it still might be better than what you're using if uh, what you're using is not very good, uh, because Astrion's Iron Ward, even in some of its worst conditions, is actually still a fairly good weapon. Um, you combine the Crushing Blow, the slowest target, the magic damage, the bonus damage, and all the other interesting things on this, like the 200% bonus to attack rating, um, and it still comes out as a very solid weapon uh, specifically for paladins now let's keep in mind though that you can actually use this on a non-paladin so the only thing on here that is paladin specific is the plus four combat skills so if we were to take this at face value and try to put it on another character um, who may want to use this for the bonus damage the attack rating bonus and things like that um, who could possibly get some good use out of this um I'm thinking right off the top of my head that maybe a maybe a uh, a shapeshifter druid could utilize this. Um, it's it's not like super slow, and it would probably have to be the um, the non-ethereal version. Um, I'm not really sure if that really makes much sense though. The um, I don't think the barbarian gets the mastery bonus from these, so it's, I don't think you could just simply dual wield these or anything for the crushing blow. The uh, maybe a kicks in. Right off the top of my head, if you just happen to have one of these laying around, the Crushing Blow and the Slowest Target could definitely be handy. And the 200% bonus to AR, I do know that... Uh, don't Kicksins have an issue with attack rating? I seem to remember that. And I think the um, bonus damage... Let's uh, let's let's check that out real quick, because that, that should be a really easy search. All we have to do is, uh, does Grief Damage work with Kick? And... Uh, so the grief damage does not work with kicks, unfortunately. So that means that the plus 85 damage on Astron's onward will also probably not work with kick. Uh, that's unfortunate. Well, anyway, as always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos. And feel free to argue with me down in the comments about grief is the superior option to Astron's onward. I'd love to hear it. Uh, because I also get the opposite when I make... Uh, well, the first time I made the, a video on Astron's ward, believe it or not... I got a lot of people saying that um, it was the superior option to grief, and that was when they posted uh, the parses proving their particular point. And um, I want to do both sides of the argument justice by at least including the parses and talking about the usefulness of Astron's Iron Ward with uh, Smiters. <laughs> As always, thanks for watching, and uh, keep watching.